Live from New York, it's theCUBE, covering Riverbed Disrupt. Brought to you by Riverbed. Now, here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to New York City, everybody. This is theCUBE, the worldwide leader in live tech coverage. Bharat Badranath is here. He's the Vice President of Marketing Solutions at Riverbed. Bharat, welcome to theCUBE. We're here to wrap up the day. Party's going, wine's flowing. <laughs> How's the day been? Oh, th thank you for having me. It's, it's been a great day. You've seen the energy, and the energy is still continuing. You see it from our customers. Our customers really love what we bring to the market, so it's been great. Well, so, we've been going all day, kind of unpacking the new product announcements, the innovations. It's kind of interesting to see the evolution of Riverbed from a company that's highly focused on WAN optimization to one that's really solving some really gnarly cloud problems, visibility in the network, application performance management. Talk a little bit about, from a marketing standpoint, how you guys are positioning for that broader opportunity. Yeah, I think from a marketing perspective, it's a great company to be, right? Primarily because the customers who know Riverbed love Riverbed. Our only challenge is how do you get it in front of more customers and how do you get them, the existing customers, to see more of our product value. Um, we, we've, you saw some of the announcements today. We brought some of our products together, packaged them better so it's easier for customers to consume them in terms of the internet-only branch, you know, the cloud-ready branch essentials, the advanced and the advanced plus. That helps them understand that these products are not disparate products, they actually go together. So when you think about SD-WAN, you should also be thinking about WAN optimization as applicable. When you're thinking about any connectivity, you should be thinking about visibility. So you can troubleshoot problems faster, but also ensure that the application performance is delivered. Stu, I want to get your take. So we've, we've, you've obviously followed the networking business for a long time. Uh, we've heard the keynotes today, interviewed a number of, of guests. Um, what are your thoughts on the networking business how Riverbed has been able to sort of carve out a fairly successful niche in WAN optimization and their prospects going forward. Yeah, so you know, we, we, we've been talking, Dave, networking has really thrived, the, the networking vendors have thrived on the complexity that's out there. Um, and I, I, I totally agree with the kind of the sentiments we heard from a number of our guests that you know, it, it's, it's ready for some change. As Steve Duplessis said, actually, pe you know, people won't make a change until they're forced to, and you just can't move fast enough. If you, if you throw in cloud, you throw in mobile, you look at where your users are, you look at where your customers are, um, if I'm managing individual devices, there's no way I can get my applications uh, and reach my customers the way I need to. So, you know, I, I, I need a bit of a rewrite, and it's some complex problems to have. And, you know, th th if we talk to kind of skating to the puck, you know, Riverbed's been doing this for a long time as to kind of applications over a wide area. And this whole SD WAN seems to be like, you know, if Riverbed had wrote the, you know, justification to create a new market, they would have written SD WAN. So, you know, it had at a good point. Uh, they've, they've pulled together uh, you know, pieces of their portfolio, they've done some acquisitions, real focus, worked with some really good uh, partner ecosystem, uh, and I think they've got a great opportunity here to you know, be right, right at the cusp uh, of you know, an exciting wave uh, in networking. So we talked about, we heard from the keynotes this morning, somebody invoked uh, the Andreessen comment about software's eating the world, uh, and then Benioff made a comment a while back, said there'll be more SaaS companies coming out of non-tech companies and there will be tech companies. So, you talk and think about your customers using the cloud, building software, make, putting data to work. That puts Riverbed in a pretty interesting situation and also probably a pretty competitive one. I think a lot of guys are going after it. So, what gives you confidence, Barat, that you guys are on the right path and can thrive the way you have in the initial markets for Riverbed? Yeah, so, so I think you hit it on the head. It's all about the software, right? So all our products are software only. Today we announced the Virtual Edge, Steel Fusion, Steel Fusion Virtual Edge product. That brings every one of our products as deliverable in the software only function, form fashion, right? You also start putting this and working with our partnerships such as Amazon, AWS, or with Azure and Google. You start seeing the possibilities where if you're job is to ensure end user experience is uh, optimal. You have to take Riverbed into account. And we are there in the form factor that the customers are asking for. We're also there when you're looking at the 
big cloud players as well as SaaS vendors, partnering with them so they can deliver the optimal customer experience there. So what do you think happens to the hardware business? Everybody's talking about software, software, software. Does it just become totally commoditized? Are there still maybe pockets? Can you still make money in hardware? Or what's, what's the future of hardware? When, when people talk about hardware and software, hardware has always had intelligence. Now all we are bringing is bringing that intelligence into the software so you can find the best provider of hardware without having, it becomes commoditized in a big way, whether it's in a cloud vendor or in a white box within your location. Uh, you have the choice. So it makes it programmable. Yeah, yeah. And, and people will pay for that programmability, right? right? So right. that's the play. Yeah. Um, and, and then, I mean, what happens to margins in that business? They go actually go up if you succeed in, in, in achieving software defined, not that you're going to predict, yeah. but just conceptually. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's a better question for, for Stu, because yeah. that would be a forward-looking statement for a company who might be public someday, but if you have a comment, I'd be interested. No, no, from our perspective, I think it's somewhat shifting of the margins, but more importantly, it gives customers the choice, right? At the end of the day, this shift allows customers better agility more than anything else, and that's what they want to do, and this shift helps them get there. So, at the end of the day, the customer benefits, whether how the margins shift and whether it's a pocket shift depends on what business you're in. And I, we see almost all vendors moving in that direction, but still, margins are being made. Well, the reality is, is to your point, Bharat, I mean, you guys have both worked at storage companies who took a Seagate disk drive and marked it up 10 times and sold it. Why were, why were, you, why were companies like NetApp and EMC able to do that? It's because they had software in the controller that right. was proprietary and delivered unique value, whether it was good copy services or, or WAN optimization or whatever it was. People will continue to pay for that value, whether it's in software or, or hardware. Right, and, and from our perspective, we're giving customers the choice, right? So if you want WAN optimization, for example, or um, our SD-WAN or any of our products, Steel Fusion, you can buy it either as a virtual edition, in which case you can just deploy it in the cloud or deploy it as a SaaS version. It, it gives you the choice, so they can decide what is the best option. And again, it helps us to give the customer the choice and we'll see what they pick on. So, so Stu, we talk about cloud all the time. Obviously, the, and, and the folks at Riverbed sort of acknowledge that today, it really started when Amazon introduced they gave the date, it was like March of 2006, I think it was. And that changed the industry. We didn't really realize at the time, although some of us were sort of early on saying, this is going to really be significant. Where are we, Stu? We used to talk about you know, innings. You know, is, it, is it game over for infrastructure as a service? Or you know, Furrier says it's just starting, or where are we? Maybe yeah. not just starting, but early innings, he's saying. Yeah, I, I think we had a year ago, we said, you know, it, I, I think the first game's over, but it's a double header uh, that's it, going on here because, you know, in, in, the, in the big public cloud markets, you know, we know who the horses are. I mean, it, it's Amazon, it's Azure, uh, and, you know, Google is, you know, coming up there. Um, doesn't mean that IBM doesn't have a big piece they could play, but I still think they look much more like a hoster or service provider uh, than they do some of the hyperscale guys. Still important. I IBM has lots of applications. To me, you know, what's been exciting today is, you know, if you're not talking about cloud and you're not talking about the applications, what are you doing in the infrastructure space? Because we talked about software eating the world, it's going to kill your margins. You know, Riverbed has from day one been focused on the application uh, and they have a, a nice message as to how they work with and tie into the cloud providers uh, so you can understand where they're doing and their core IP from the WAN optimization ties straight into what they're doing going forward. Uh, so, you know, it's it, it been a good day for me. I, I've, I've learned a lot here um, and understand how, as, as Jerry told us, you know, he sees visibility as to how he's going to take the company towards like $5 billion. So. Um, Back to your, I mean, cloud, it's, it's still pretty early. Uh, uh, you were not, I'm sure you saw Pat Gelsinger's uh, you know, comments in his keynote that said, you know, five years from now is, you know, he actually is like, it was like, you know, on June 5th, uh, five years from now, on this day of the month and on this hour is when we will surpass 50% of workloads will be in public cloud. Kind of making a joke at it, but you know, we know public cloud, it's growing, it's still relatively small compared to all of IT. Uh, today, from Wikibon's numbers, you know, two thirds of public cloud is SaaS today. Infrastructure as a service, um, you know, $10 billion from both Amazon and Azure, kind of in that ballpark, that's still really small compared to if you take, you know, Cisco, Dell, HPE, Oracle, and line them up against it, but they are growing. 
you know, sustained at you know, the 40 to 70 to 80 percent uh, you know, year over year, and we've still got many years of steep growth for public cloud, um, and companies need to figure out how to fit into that from the vendor side, and customers need to understand how to adopt it. Well, it was interesting to hear Youssef on theCUBE today saying, our, pro, our point of view is there aren't going to be a lot of us around, at least at the infrastructure as a service level, because you have to have the scale. The interesting part of that is you know, cloud of services, and services have always been fragmented and distributed geographically, but from an economic standpoint, you could say, well, he's probably right. There probably aren't going to be a lot of these guys around, notwithstanding SaaS, there'll be yeah. tons of SaaS players. Does it matter to Riverbed? I mean, if there are a lot or a few, um, you could still sell your services through Azure, you know, AWS and Google. I think the more uh, the merrier. Yeah, the, 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 the more cloud. the merrier because the more clouds you have, you have to connect those clouds more. So we play a big role there. Um, the yes, but, 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 if, if, but if Microsoft and Amazon are the last standing, they're going to have a zillion data centers and clouds around, right? right? right. But okay. But, but, but from Riverbed's point of view, it really doesn't matter, right? At the end of the day, the customer is going to bring some unique combination of clouds, whether there's, they have two to choose from or 200 or 2,000, doesn't matter. But if, you, if their focus is on how they marry those clouds together to provide their customers with the right solution and we can play a part in it, we all win, right? Well, and I think SaaS is the big winner, yeah. uh, well, the, yeah. the big tailwind for you guys, because yeah. it's like Benioff said, more SaaS companies coming out of you know, non-tech companies. I think that's a clear, everybody's a SaaS company. Everybody's writing in, you know, API, publishing APIs. That's yeah. a great trend for yeah, you guys, and, isn't and it? Yeah, and SaaS, to be fair, makes Riverbed even more important in the environment because typically when you start sizing your SaaS and start deploying your SaaS applications to your end users, you usually use two or three pilot locations where you check for performance, check for user experience, and all that good stuff. And then you roll it out globally, and immediately you notice that the uh, response times you get in San Francisco, for example, are not the same as you get in southern part of Africa or in other parts <laughs> of the globe. But that's where Riverbed comes into play in a, in a pretty substantial fashion, right? We can guarantee that, but we can also offer the visibility for, for the IT administrators to know what customers are getting or their customers are getting at different parts of the world. Well, in applications, or infrastructure rather, has always been, been subservient to applications. I guess database, notwithstanding, if you count database as infrastructure, but, but even database is shifting to say, you can see you know, Larry Ellison's acquisition of, of NetSuite, yeah. you know, more accelerating the move to SaaS. SaaS is the new control point. You right. know, infrastructure is the plumbing, right. right? And if the water's not flowing through the pipes, then there's a problem, but yeah. if it is, nobody wants to pay attention to it. And, and that's really yeah, what your absolutely. goal is, to make the infrastructure invisible, right? Right, absolutely, and I think our, our role and the direction we are heading in, we want to make the platform, the application performance platform, as extensible as possible. So when people are deploying their apps, whether it's in the SaaS, in the private data center, if they have a platform they can deploy or attach along with it and not worry about everything else, their implementations get a lot easier and faster. So how does the competition respond to, to all this, this trend? I mean, you know, Cisco's highly entrenched, has you know, 60, 70% of the market for years. Riverbed's shown that you can compete in the WAN optimization, more than compete, you got half the market, uh, so dominant player there. But how does Cisco respond to this? You got NSX coming at them. You yeah, got, so I mean, you know, Jay Shree Cisco making has moves. so many pieces. I mean, I've always said Cisco's not one company, they're really a hundred, and they've got individual pieces. Uh, what they've had challenges doing is what you know, Riverbed's looking to do here, which is to take a bunch of different right. pieces, pull them together, build a whole solution, um, because that's what customers need. They need simplicity, uh, and that takes a lot of work. Uh, and you know, Cisco makes a lot of money off putting all those pieces together in the field and allowing their channel to make money off of it um, and keep their people CCIE trained. So absolutely, you know, it's, we talked about in the intro, Dave, you know, it's not a billion dollar market yet, and I, I don't know if there's anybody that's even a hundred million dollars in SD-WAN, but I know Cisco's looking at it, you know, they've made acquisitions around this space, they've got a number of products. I'm sure as it gets a little bit bigger, they'll come on full bore, they'll probably claim leadership in the space, uh, just like every market leader does. But you're saying integration there. for them is harder because of the piece parts. Why is it easier for Riverbed, just because they're smaller? Yeah, I think it, a lot of it is that it's, they're smaller, yeah, it can we, be more nimble. We don't have they're a legacy. private, Dave. Yeah, we're private, <laughs> and, and we don't have a they legacy. They can write their own narrative. We, we can, <laughs> and, and we don't have a legacy business to protect, right? right? So, for us, um, we can now take this transformation that's happening in the data center all the way up to the branch. We don't have to worry about them buying 
or managing existing routers that they have, which is why this becomes a game changer, right? It, it's bringing networking to the cloud era, if you will, where you can now deploy on a click of a button at a remote location and not have to worry about local entering command, uh, local expertise entering command line interface code. So I, I think from that perspective, we don't have a legacy or baggage to worry about. Right, and, and, and the whole flash storage trend has been great for, for network companies who can solve problems because it used to be the spinning disk was the bottleneck. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't matter, you know, what else? You couldn't get the data off the disk. But yeah. now with flash, it's really shifted the bottleneck, hasn't it? Yeah, ab absolutely. The you know network, you know, if if network's now the bottleneck, <laughs> uh, you know that that can be a challenge. And you know, we, we we've talked about it a few times. The you know you add cloud, you add mobile. You know, moving data is tough. I mean, David Floyer has been teaching me for years about <laughs> you know how tough this is. So if I don't need to move it, I don't want to. But um, you got your systems of record and your system of engagement, and I need to get some pieces of data all over the place. IoT is a whole nother ball of wax as to what it's going to have at the edge and you know what I'm going to need feed, to feed back. So uh, lots of opportunity for uh, solutions that can uh, you know try to fight the speed of light yeah, uh, like Riverbed's sure. been doing. For well, it's years. interesting. I mean, you don't want to move data, but you have to move data yeah. sometimes. You guys are all about moving data as, as efficiently as possible, and the digital transformation, digital revolution, whatever you want to call it, it's, it's all about data. Yep. D -d digital is data. And, and the, 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 the shape of the curve is, it's getting even uh, beyond exponential, right? In terms of data growth. We always talk about the data growth, but it's, it's beyond, well beyond Moore's Law. Yeah. And uh, that's a great trend for you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think users are demanding different experiences on their mobile phone. Whatever we used to use our laptops for in the past, maybe even three, four years ago, we expect all that functionality and more to be available on our mobile devices, which means data has to move through different networks, depending on where you are, have that flexibility to still get you that user experience, right? So um, you mentioned earlier, data, you don't want to move it as much as you know, possible. The users are asking that data to move to their choice of location, which makes it a very tricky problem for IT to solve, and Riverbed is here to help with that. All right, how about Disrupt? Um, where are you taking this? You know, where's it going? What, what should we expect going forward the next couple of years? So, uh, as you rightfully started, this is our first big event for this year. We'd probably see some more events next year coming through where, where we want to bring in and increase our presence in the market. So, um, SD-WAN is very exciting technology, but so is our Steel Central and our user experience products from uh, Eternity that we acquired. So you're going to see Riverbed make a lot more noise around this. Great. Well, Brat, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having us at yeah. Disrupt. We look forward to tracking Riverbed and, and watching the progress. I'm personally very excited. I love, Stu, the new private equity model where private equity realizes that the VC shouldn't have all the fun getting these giant returns, that there's more than just sucking cash that you can you can use debt as a lever judiciously, yeah. you know, if you, if we, as we heard from Jerry, if you acquire companies with a yeah. accretive EBITDA, yeah. and you can add value for your shareholders, and I'm really excited to see, you know, the next chapter of Riverbed as, as it's expanded into these, these new markets. So again, thanks for having us, and really appreciate it. Well, thank you. Okay, so thanks for watching everybody. Let's see, this is a wrap. Uh, next week, uh, actually, uh, right now, uh, in the West Coast, the IO Data Center event that's going on. We're at IBM Edge next week, Oracle Open World also next week, uh, and then you know, the fall schedule. Check out SiliconANGLE TV, SiliconANGLE.TV for the upcoming events. Check out Wikibon.com for all the research. SiliconANGLE.com for all the news. Thanks to Patrick, Alex, Leonard, Kristen, Nicole for all the live blogging. Appreciate all the tweets. That's a wrap. We'll see you next time. This is theCUBE.